Hello, I'm Chris Parkin, and this is the Hick Stella SQ50 Thermal Rifle Scope. I've got it fitted to a CZ600 Alpha in 223, and I'm taking it out foxing tonight. Welcome to the shooting show. Baseline optical magnification is 2.3 times zoom. There's also digital zoom of 1, 2, 4 or 8 times. The top right corner of the internal display screen clearly displays which one you're set in and the left side control wheel quickly rolls up between the settings. You can set up five different zeroing profiles and each one can be listed with a number and also a zeroing distance. So you can either set it up on five rifles or one rifle at five distances. This fox was first spotted at about 200 metres and it went across the top of the field and behind a tree. But you could clearly see its tail for identification requirements. There are a lot of very large hairs on this piece of land so we have to watch out carefully. When we were squeaking for the fox it's actually quite interesting because the sound recording and sound reproduction from the actual recording of the Stella itself is very very unusual and it doesn't really sound like the noises we were making at the time. It's also very close to your face, so you do need to make sure you're speaking quietly and whispering, otherwise it does overpower the speaker volume. Wind noise is picked up quite strongly on the microphone, so it's well worth muffling it slightly and putting something soft over it, or what's actually technically called a dead cat, to suppress the wind noise. I was very impressed by the 50 Hz refresh rate because you do get very smooth image with no latency. The image does auto refresh occasionally, but you can actually switch this off if you're worried it might auto refresh at a critical moment when you are about to take a shot. At this point, Dave's squeaking very quietly. I decided to wade in and make some more volume and the fox suddenly pricked its ears up and it came at us quite quickly. I found myself reducing magnification quickly because it was running at us so fast and it actually ended up about 25 meters away where I shot it. But a good loud shout as soon as it was clear of the cows made sure it stopped in a safe place. The farmer had reported to us that he'd heard a lot of noise from two foxes possibly courting with each other the previous night, so it's well worth waiting around to watch out and see if another one turned up. This was the vixen, so it was more than likely if another one did turn up it would be a dog. Holding the main power button down for three seconds turns the unit on. Similarly at the end of use, holding it down will turn the unit off. A single press on this left rear button takes a still image, a longer hold sets up video recording. The right rear button scrolls through the colour palettes. There's a rubber bellows eye cup on the back of the scope to seal out all extraneous light. Eyepiece focus to correct for the diopter adjustment of your own eyes is using the collar just below the rubber bellows on the back of the scope's ocular body. Eye relief is 60 millimetres. The removable right side cap is tethered so you can't lose it and I really like this. It shields the USB-C cable for battery charging and data retrieval. There are two internal rechargeable lithium batteries. Removing the top cap reveals the CR123A battery that can be swapped quickly without powering the unit down if you need to extend the runtime. These can be easily carried spare in your pocket and this one is rechargeable. All the caps have got rubber seals to maintain the IP67 rating. There's a push button on the left side to turn the menu on and off and rotating the dial controls the menu structures which are quite easy to read and also simple to use. There's a flip open lens cap that protects the objective lens and you can also rotate this in position to suit where you want it so you can easily access the image focusing dial. Because it uses a standard 30mm main tube, you can use regular scope rings and it makes it easy to fit to some rifles which aren't quite as accepting without an inbuilt Picatinny rail. If you're using a torque wrench, you can of course take the scope on and off quite easily to swap between daylight and darkness conditions without losing zero. Hick Supply a padded Cordura carry case which stores the scope very securely 
between uses if you are swapping back and forth. It will also store the carry cloth and the USB-C cable. This fox was sauntering through the farmyard when I was actually doing some pest control one night with the air rifle. It was great to get one in so close and video it with such detail. The sensor resolution is 640 by 512 pixels and there's a 12 micron pixel pitch. Refresh rate is 50 Hz so you get smooth image without latency. The net D effect is less than 35 millikelvin sensitivity. The 50 mm objective lens is f1.0 and optical magnification is 2.3 times. You can then digitally boost the magnification either 1, 2, 4 or 8 times within the scope using the left side wheel which is fast and easy to control. Picture in picture is also available but I tend not to use it because I found the left side wheel so quick and intuitive to use. Lateral field of view is 8.8 .8 degrees and vertically it's 7.03 degrees. The internal display is a 9.9mm organic LED with 1024 by 768 pixel resolution. There are five reticle shape options and any can be displayed in white, green or red. The HIC website actually carries very comprehensive instructions about the resolution of the reticle in terms of pixels, milliradians or minutes of angle. That can make your aim off calculations far easier to organise. Video and stills recording is available from the same easy to access button on top of the eyepiece. You can also set it up to activate through recoil. The 64 gigabytes of internal storage for stills and video and a USB-C cable is supplied for both charging and data withdrawal. A hot tracking function is available and you can also send the image via Wi-Fi to a smartphone or tablet. Operating time is up to 13 hours of continuous running, but that is with the Wi-Fi and hot tracking disabled. Environmental protection is assured with an IP67 code, which protects against temporary submersion or, to you and me, rainfall, because I hope you're not going to drop it in a puddle. That also covers an operating temperature range from minus 30 to plus 55 degrees. In comes fox number two just over 300 metres away and it's about to cross through the fence line. You can clearly see the tail at this distance through the rifle scope which reassures your confirmation of what it is. I set the sticks up for shooting this fox so it was a little bit less steady and in fairness I didn't quite make the shot perfect. Here you can see I'm adjusting the image focus using the collar wrapping the objective lens. The fact the objective lens cap will rotate around and you can flip it either to the left or the right makes the scope very adaptable to left or right handed shooters. Going out to check the fox quickly reveals that the teeth show it's definitely one of last year's cubs and it is the dog I suspected it would be. Overall dimensions are 407mm long by 78mm overall width including the turrets. Overall weight is 890 grams. Recoil resistance is rated at 6750 joules which is far more than you're likely to want with 60mm of eye relief. Here you can see I'm zeroing the Stella on an air rifle using black diamond paper target and a wooden backer. The thick wooden backer means the pellet impacting generates a lot of heat so you can see your point of impact. We've not really had any cold weather yet, and when I was zeroing the Stella on the 223, I decided to use a steel target. Image contrast wasn't brilliant in the warm weather, but I decided to improvise and I lit a small fire under my steel gong because I didn't have a blowtorch handy. For those people worried about the metallurgy and hardness of the target heating it up in a fire, don't worry, it probably only got to about 50 or 75 degrees, gave me better thermal contrast and certainly is not going to damage the heat treatment which makes it bulletproof. Although you can use paper or foil targets to give thermal signature for aiming, I do find a steel or wooden backer much better because you get an immediate thermal image of the bullet actually impacting for ease of zeroing. The HIC has a one-shot zero capability, or you can dial it in any of the menus with Cartesian coordinates on X and Y axes. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching that review of the HIC thermal rifle scope. This Stella has fitted easily on several rifles, and because of the 30mm main tube, it's made it far easier to swap back and forth with conventional rings on a Picatinny rail. 
I used it when I first got it in more controlled close range conditions for some air rifle usage for some pest control of pigeons and I found it really quick and easy to set up and with multiple rifle modes I can swap back and forth with very little return to zero problems. Since that time I've swapped it onto this 223 for longer range use for foxing control. I've spotted foxes over 300 meters away with it. The long range advertisement for the rifle is 2600 meters on a human which is you know about 1.8 meters tall. I've spotted foxes well over 300 meters with it but I've been very comfortable shooting probably beyond 250 to maybe 300 meters although to be fair I haven't had to shoot in that distance because in the time I've had this we've had quite a few you know first year cubs just grown up and they don't half come like steam trains when you call them in you can see that on the video I hope as well as video and stills the hick does record sound quality and I think it's fair to say that the sound reproduction isn't quite as clear as you might think although Dave's squeaking and my squeaking is certainly not a professional level and perhaps mine's a little bit more attractive than Dave's to the foxes um, the actual reproduction of, of sound isn't quite as crisp or as true as you would have hoped for well thank you for watching please like subscribe comment and don't forget to click the notification bell so you can keep track of the regular uploads thank you for watching bye for now